You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. The AfterBuzz After Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Happy Endings After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Happy Endings After Show. Woo! What's up, everybody? Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another after show for Happy Endings. We are in season three, and now they're doing two shows a week, so we're getting a double dose of Happy Endings. So we've got episode 10, episode 11, Kickball 2, The Kickening, and The X Factor. And I'm your host, Kelly, and joining me on the panel today are... Spicy Mari, keeping it sizzling in here. <laughs> and I'm... Baron Kusu, adding MSG to the spice bag. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so in Sunday's episode, we had a, another kickball episode, which I love it when these guys get physical. It's really, really funny. But, the, you know, the, the, the gist of that episode, I want to just go through it real quick because the X Factor episode, Mark Paul Gossler, I think is my favorite. And I really want to, like, oh, dig really? into that. I think he's, you know, it's Zach Morris. Come on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's the first thing I said. I was like, Zachary Morris? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. Exactly if you're really sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> so the kickball episode, how funny was it that Dave could just not kick the ball? He just, you know, just couldn't do it. He was so freaked out about kicking Penny in the face. He just couldn't, he just couldn't do it. And he was losing, you know, was losing for everyone. But I love how they were playing for Team Shayla. And knew, but nobody knew what Shayla was, which was the name <laughs> of Alex's store. It's supposed to be Zila, right? Yeah, it's well, spelled she's, yeah. But she's mispronouncing <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> so leave it, yeah, leave it yeah. to Alex. <laughs> of course, of course. But in the end, they end up losing. But Dave kicks the ball. So it was a victory in that sense. The triumph, yeah. Triumph for that. <laughs> so I thought it was funny. Okay, the X Factor. All right. How many Let's of talk you about guys. Sex. Come on up. Ow! <laughs> Favorite topic. <laughs> so when you're in a new relationship, how, I mean, do you like to have the X Talk? What do you think about the X Talk? I mean, I think it, it is an honest thing to bring up the X Talk, especially when your ex is. You know, when your ex was a girl. <laughs> when your ex was of the same sex. It's the same sex as you. But, I think that is very, you know, it's it's honesty. I think I think it's you have to bring it up. If it was a girl. If, yeah. But if it wasn't a girl, you don't have to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I think that there always needs to be the ex discussion just to kind of find out uh, what happened in the relationship. Uh, prior why it didn't work out and what kind of drama they're bringing to the new relationship. I think her being a lesbian in the past probably should have been mentioned. By curious, I think. I By think curious. experimental. She, 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 she experimented. Well, like she, she, had ex she, you know, she, we find out she had more than one ex-girlfriend. So I think <laughs> it was a little bit more than right. just experimentation. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but no, of Jane's course, full -blown lesbo. of course, it's Brad and Jane that are going through this, this situation, this scenario. So Jane's ex comes back into town and they have a rule about exes. They get to have one unsupervised date with their ex. Is that right? Now, I've, to my understanding, it's you get to have one date, and it's the choice of the current partner whether they want to attend or not. Oh, yeah. gotcha. One okay. dinner. One dinner, yeah. one right. Dinner. One dinner, dinner okay. date. Which I think that's an amazing rule. Of course, I would always be attending. <laughs> if I was given the option, I would always be in attendance. That's a very grown-up role to have. <laughs> very to be, mature. You know, to be comfortable very enough to allow, you know, to not... Not let like get the best the of you insecurity. to be okay. Yeah, yeah, to not let your insecurities take over to be okay with that. But as we see, when Brad finds out it was it, that it's a girl, right. his insecurities kind of take over, and his curiosity about the whole could this be a threesome? Right. Let's all hang out together. I, I, I think that he was thinking more of a fantasy. He yeah. assumed that they're gonna have a threesome He's like, oh, later. Perfect. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Up until somebody said, "I love you." 
And that's when that was the kind of like the game changer right there. And Brad immediately gets very protective of his wife. He mm-hmm. takes immediate ownership. He says we're going to our marriage bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> marriage bed. I'm, only Brad would uh-huh. call it a marriage bed. Yeah. But he's threatened now because now he knows that this wasn't just a fling. It was real feelings and real intimacy that was shared between mm-hmm. Ryan and Jane. Right. And and what I thought was so funny, the way that they pointed out this whole thing is, um, you know, he gets really insecure. He freaks out. But then he decides, OK, I mean, he makes a graph. He does like the whole like, the PowerPoint presentation, everything like he is, you know, talking about his shops that he does, you know, push-ups. you know, push-ups. his push ups. And but he goes to the extreme to do that to prove he's the one that's loved her the most. Right. Or she, and you know, he's the one that's Definitely. the most loved. That, and that, all, Yeah, and all that, that her love for him is stronger yes. than any other love. Right. <laughs> Well, then he decides, okay, he's going to be a grown-up about it. He's going to do this redo. He's going to redo this date. And unbeknownst to Jane, he invites his ex-girlfriend or his ex, <laughs> you know, his... Melissa. You know, she's yeah, very Melissa. beautiful, too. Yeah, and she's got an accent and everything. Gorgeous girl. Very, very gorgeous girl. But I think the, the funny thing for me about this was that Jane's insecurity started coming out when she found out that it was a physical relationship. Right, she started getting a little nervous, mm-hmm. a little well, shaky. What kind of Her relationship is distorted. not physical? Hello, right? People. But well, I, I know, <laughs> but I don't know. It's, it's a whole, other, <laughs> it's a whole other thing when it, anymore. you know, when it comes when it comes out, and your yeah, husband definitely. is talking about he's having sex with the, you know, he had sex with somebody sitting he, next. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And and he purposely say that to make her jealous too. You yeah, know? absolutely. I mean, like he, He's the one to say, okay, let's be grown up about it. And then he starts saying about, oh, yeah, we it, like our relationship was pure physical. Uh-huh. And that's really, really ticked Jane's off. So, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But it was just funny to see them kind of going at each other and trying to one up each other with, you know, with each of their exes when in the end, you know, their exes end up hooking up and then. Which kind of, I predicted <laughs> that, though. If you yeah. asked me my after buzz prediction during the show, I would have foresaw <laughs> them hooking up and, yeah, that being that. And of course, Jane leading Brad to the bedroom like usual. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. So that, you know, in the end, of course, it all works out. And But it's just kind of funny to watch them go through their little, you know, relationship spats and the struggles that they go through. It seems like that's a constant uh, storyline on Happy Endings is between, like, Jane and Brad proving each other's love back and forth. Mm-hmm. There's always, mm-hmm. like, an obstacle or challenge. There's one person's jealous. Just like the episode when uh, Jane was working at a car dealership. Mm-hmm. And so once again, you know, she's... The, it's like the love battle right there, right? Yeah, well, definitely. it's the struggle of, um, of attention, and right. you know, and when, you know, when Brad brought the pig and you know the gender, <laughs> you know the gender roles and all of that, and I think maybe that could be one of the things because Jane has been so experimental in her relationships that maybe that's what you know might add to his insecurity because you know maybe he wasn't as adventurous as you know she was, and well, what was you know, more that hilarious could be a thing. is when she kept going on with the women that she had been with. I think that he wasn't looking at it like, oh my gosh, you've been with a lot of women. He's looking at it like, after t- the tenth person, you're no longer on the two hands anymore. Yeah. So he yeah. starts counting like, really, like you've been with twenty people. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> you slept. I know. <laughs> Definitely. It's well, really I, I, I kind of want to add something. I, I, it's, it's not really relevant, but from what what their relationship shows me, I I mean, they they I think Jane and Brad they would have like crazy like like sex in the sling kind of like really just, <laughs> well I mean you know because I see you know Jane and the way their relationship it is so it, it is is it's physical and and I really feel the chemistry you know the, mm-hmm. the two the two of them play that is kind of like off balance and, and I mean it's especially especially Jane like well you think that they have to have a hot relationship you know like I mean one, they must like, have one, a hot once relationship. the doors are closed you know what I mean I think it's got to get pretty hot and having it <laughs> It but she th- seems so conservative. You would never really predict that she was the big freak that she conservative is. Conservative is usually. The freak. She's very <laughs> prude, very <laughs> anal, but like she probably takes that to the bedroom, and I th- she I takes th- the anal part. The, to the anal bedroom. part to the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> She so. think, are, aren't like the preacher's daughter like the freakiest of yeah, all? You definitely. Know? She's yeah. always down for the get down, no matter what he suggests, whether it's like whipped cream or porcupines. Jane's down for it. Okay, all right, let's move on. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, what do okay? What do we think about Penny and Pete? Penny and Pete are still hanging on. Oh, they make me nauseous. Still, like, why? Really? Yeah. I, they are cute. I, well, I like. See, their I love Penny, but I love Penny with her own 
personal. I, I just love Penny by herself because I feel like she's more free. She kind of was uncomfortable in the environment with his friends, mm -hmm. which uh, it made for good comedy. But Jane has so much isms and quirks about her. I'm sorry. Uh, Penny, Penny has so many uh -huh. uh, quirks and isms about her right. that I feel like makes her exceptional and she really stands out on the show. And I feel like he kind of distracts from that. And she just it just seemed like she was just embarrassing herself the entire time while she was with the friends. I right. didn't get too many laughs on that part. I think they're just trying to make fun of the gang to show that how Pete's friends, like how mature and how intelligent they are compared to Penny's friend or the gang. They're, they're all about gossips and, you know, talk about, you know, random stuff every day. That's what they do. Right, the nonsense. They don't really care about, like, the fiscal cliff or, like, the, the, the debt ceiling and stuff like that, you know, the, the big stuff. They don't really worry about that. And I think that's why that, that's that's what make their relationship interesting because I think Penny needs a, a guy to to really teach her that kind of stuff, you know, like more but mature. But just because they don't talk about it, does it make them less intelligent than Pete's friends? <laughs> I mean, I, guess, I don't sit around with my friends talking about the fiscal cliff and what's going to happen with these right. Obama just, negotiations. Right. You know what I mean? It's really not something I want to think about when I'm hanging with my homies. It's just <laughs> not when I'm sitting around the coffee shop, I really don't want to get into these hardcore political debates and like all of that all the time and I think I don't think that that makes me and my friends any less intelligent than anyone else it's just it, you know it's just kind of a lighter group of people a lighter like yeah. these people are totally that you know stereotypical coffee house group that they all they want to talk about is the issues and what's wrong with the world and you know all these important things about the environment right. and that sort of thing just very right. kind of stale conversation well, it definitely didn't look like they were having any fun no but, everybody looked <laughs> bored but I did feel horrible. like in that moment Penny was kind of low key like judging them because she's like well what do you mean you guys don't do, so there's not going to be like a great ending to this story like that's it and so I'm sure that probably made them feel uncomfortable as right. well because well, it's hard think. when you're the new girlfriend being introduced to all the friends right but the right. dynamic was so different going you know from her group of friends where everybody's nuts and something Weird, always yeah. happens I mean don't you have a friend that every time you talk to them or when you hang out something <laughs> crazy drama. always happens yeah. like it's Definitely. always drama everybody has that drama friend you yeah. know but the, like she's got four of them <laughs> that you know it's always like that so when you're in a more a, a more calm environment and the way Pete puts it as normal but you know and maybe maybe that is normal but I, I don't I don't know and uh, being here in LA I don't really find a calm group of people you know that far that close around to go hang out with everybody's <laughs> always got some kind of drama going I on love, <laughs> I love I absolutely love that Penny knows when the drama's about to start though just because the bad transitions between Brad and Jane she's like oh here it comes here it comes it's yeah. about to come I already know like she knows exactly her friends like clockwork inside and out yeah, and then she definitely. left that dramaful situation because it wasn't enough to go meet up with Alex yeah. and Max right for, and then then and gets the bigger dramatic situation which we'll get into in a second but I also thought it was kind of you know unfair for Pete not to kind of give her a heads up on how the situation was going to be because what especially I mean, because when you're in a new relationship and if I'm bringing my let, let's say my group of friends my group of friends are pretty much like, you know, the guys here. I mean, not to that extreme, but they're kind of nuts. And there's, you know, there's always something going on. And we've always got a nutty story. Right. right. So if I'm bringing somebody new in, it's always hard to join a new group, especially a tight knit one. Yeah. But you always give them a heads up. Okay. This is how so and so is. This is kind of the, <laughs> this is kind of the vibe of the that room. That is so and, true. You know what I mean? That, that is, is really a great, true. like, Wait. these are the things I love about you. These are the things I feel that they're going to love about you. These are some similarities. I think you'll have this in common. With them, I mean, you kind of prep them. That if is these so are true. your friends that you're so die hard about having your girlfriend or boyfriend come and meet, then wouldn't you want it to go well? I felt like he just kind of threw her in the pool and was like, sink or swim. Yeah, like, babe, you know that kind of like awkward things that you say that make people feel uncomfortable? Just tone it down a bit. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, he like all the awkward, that. quirky things I love about you. Yeah. Well, maybe. Not everybody embraces well, so much. Well, I think yeah. I think this will lead to, you know, future conflicts mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, their relationship goals. Probably they would have problem in communications. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're not, they don't, they don't, communicate well, certain new. things to each other yeah. exactly it's a new relationship. so so we'll see how this relationship going to go but i think that was i think that was a good point though that yeah, was yeah i mean point. and then when you know when we go to her friends and it's all the drama and all the fun he even makes a point yes your friends are a lot of fun so I mean maybe they can find a balance and he can kind of see her side of it but you know it was a little bit unfair of her on the other hand to not even be not even get not even get the idea of 
I have to hang out with your friends. Right, sharing. Why? 50, like, 50. A share, yeah, like sharing the time. You know, and sometimes that happens. You know, when you get in a new relationship, one one side always, you know, wins the majority of your time. It's very, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very hard to kind of balance out. Right. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily want to go and have hardcore discussions all the time, especially after a long day at work. I don't want right. to sit and talk about the fiscal And then you cliff. have to describe how, <laughs> then you have to break down how each friend is too. Yeah. So that, that way you know how, just like Penny would know That's how to address them. That's too hard of work when, when he can come into the, her group and just be himself and nobody He can be care. a weirdo and would not be rejected by any means or judged. There, should, it's not and, but that's why I think you felt like Penny was so embarrassed because all this group of people was so judgy. But I was. think she went a little too hard yeah. on the girl shirt when she spilt the wine. On, I've never heard Penny come at anybody that crazy. But I think she was if putting you think if it would have happened, like if it would have happened in her group of friends, they would have all made fun of each other. It would have been Max to say what she was saying. And I think that, that was kind true. of the thing. She was waiting to hear that. So she was kind <laughs> of Because that's kind of what it would have happened. So she w and she was like, oh, wait, you guys don't do the pylons where you just pile on a bunch of insults to each other? Like, ah, ha, ha, And they were looking happened? at her crazy. I was like, oh, burn. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I think that's why you felt so much that she was embarrassed because it was just like these looks of I don't get you and I don't even want to try to like nobody was w it didn't seem like it was a very welcoming group of people well because she, she came didn't understand them too huh? but I just thought she came off like way too like loud and quirky and way and they're just so like demure and quiet that it just wasn't a good do you think she could have been trying harder because it was a, d a new group of people absolutely I think she was overdoing it and I think she was kind of playing the parts of her other like I said she was being more max then I think she was being herself mm -hmm. a little bit. Definitely, I think he he uh, she, in a way she wanted to you know win them over as well. Mm -hmm. But you, if you remember at the very beginning, she didn't want to hang out with his friends at all. Right? At all, yeah. <laughs> yeah Which so. isn't fair either. So exactly. you know, so, so she already came in with kind of a bad attitude. But I do <laughs> think she was trying to overcompensate and it went a little bit too far. But I do appreciate Penny apologizing and then throwing money at his friends <laughs> and not no, not like dollar bills. It was like hundreds, right? And <laughs> That is not insulting I, at all. No, that I, is honestly, not insulting at all. I do sympathize with Penny. Uh, <laughs> even though I feel like she went a little extra and was over the top, I do sympathize with her because I've been in that situation and it's really it's hard when you're in the new group of friends. And I hard. have been told that I am an acquired taste. That's how I was described. <laughs> I'm like, that's how you would describe me. But Penny is too an acquired taste. Yes, and so in her defense, know. it was an awkward and rough situation. But she got through it. Right. I mean, as we all do. I mean, I hear the same thing. I mean, I really, you know, I don't like new people, really. And it's <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. You, you heard know, this from Kelly. I'm, I'm, never, I'm ever come saying, up <laughs> After Buzz exclusive, Kelly does not like new people. No, no. But you got to, like, it's my, it's my job to be fun and friendly all the time. Right. So when I'm in my group of people, I, I sometimes I seem like I'm a little bit standoffish and people think that I, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of mean. And I, I mean, I'm really not. I'm just like tired sometimes. Like, <laughs> you're like, I have I'm to talk for a living all day long. Do that all day long. I just want to sit back and chill and right. just observe the room. And for, with your with your normal group of friends, you can be in that like silence and it not be awkward. Right. I don't have to be entertaining people, which right. is what I do all day. So it's kind of nice to be entertained. So when new people come in and it's, you know, it's kind of a different thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, they catch me on a good day and it's all loud. And it's like, oh, wow, I didn't, you know, I didn't know you could be like, and it's you're, just. You're better than I you thought. Know, you're not as mean as I thought That's you exactly were. what I thought about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, you know, I, you have to give just... people m multiple chances, though. Just right. Just like they're going to have to give Penny another chance to come back when she's calm and collective mm -hmm. and comfortable and then be able to kind of show her personality. Right, but also the, the other people that are kind of intertwining these groups should also kind of explain the situation, you know, and kind of give, have, you know, little descriptions, give people a heads up. Or they should have like a group bowling night or something. You know, something to kind of ease the, you know, kind of ease everybody in. But I'm I saying mean, amongst the Happy Endings crew and yeah. uh, Pete's new friends. I mean, do you find that? As, <laughs> do you find that as Obviously. you get as you get older, it's a little bit harder. It's to, a little like, bit harder to, to make friends. They they did actually do, do research and they have an article on that. Mm -hmm. As we grow older, our friend circle tend to be tight and small because we 
I guess just the time, and we don't have the time to commit to new people. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you have to invest and you have to hang out with them to find out their personality. Yeah, and I'm and telling yeah. you, you mm-hmm. have to put on little shows. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Juggling like 15 new friends right now. It's a lot it's of like, work. It is a lot of work. A lot of work. It's a lot of work between my day job, my after month shows. Right. And what do you guys are a job too? <laughs> so what do you guys think about uh, Max? Uh, Max new roommate. Oh, oh my gosh, Mark <laughs> Paul Gosler. I love him so much. Let's have a moment of silence for his beauty. <laughs> Everyone take it in and just enjoy. He is a handsome. He, no, I will say this. He is an exquisite, fine white boy. I love how he has just grown up so adorable and has just gotten so much better. I mean, age. I was crushing on him when I was 10 and I'm still crushing on him now. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I mean, can't no, believe it. I love that they got so obsessed with him and trying to find him, going through his phone, going through his bills, stalking him at a restaurant. Come to find out he's, you know, shacking up with Max as his <laughs> love shack or his sex shack so he can cheat on his wife. Men do that though. I do know multiple they men do, who have separate homes. They do, but you don't get a roommate. You do well, get a sex shack roommate. Kelly, in this economy, yeah. you're trying to if, save money. If, I'm if just saying. Pay, I'm saying, if he could pay five months rent up front and have a jacuzzi in that the is, place. That's true. Come that on, true. he does not need a sex but, shack roommate. But he doesn't want an apartment in his name or any property that's, that's in his true, name because true. his wife will see that. That's true. That's and credit true. card bill, all of well, that. Wow, look at us, breaking down all the... <laughs> I, 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 I should learn this. See, it's like I you can't have learn. friends, you can't have husbands, <laughs> you can't have anything. It's a tough time. But for did everyone. he or did he not like completely just kind of revamp the apartment and just make it twenty times? Oh nicer? no, he totally, Definitely totally he did. did, totally did. Well, let's get into some predictions and see if he if uh, he's really going to come and ruin Max's life. And now, you're after <laughs> that was a guest appearance. <laughs> but he's got to come back. Do you think he'll be back? He will I come back. I would love for him to come back. I see. Yeah. I see. That's a foreshadow. Like, yeah, you know. absolutely. I think it, it definitely was foreshadowing. He's absolutely got to come back. You think so? So yes. I think. I think him and Kelly should come back. Remember Kelly oh. from Saved by the Bell? Yeah. <laughs> Kelly Kapowski. I think Kelly oh, yeah, Kapowski and definitely. him should come back. I used to love their love. <laughs> <laughs> she should be the new in- love interest for Dave. <laughs> oh, that's a great <laughs> and, bre- and like okay. and like break up. You know, Dave and Alex, and then she starts hanging out with. I love Max that. Are the writers at home? Are you guys watching? <laughs> like, I know you guys are tuning in to us. Come on, pick up this from Kelly. This that's is a good what idea. To, that's what you guys get that one Break for free. Up. What yeah. do you think is gonna happen? I think that Pete and Penny's relationship. Hmm. That's that's a. I think that's they, they're gonna face a lot of problems. On as the way a pro- out. Yeah, on, are they on their way out? Happy endings. I mean, happy endings. You never know. Okay, so my prediction is about. Pete and Penny as well and I think that the crew is going to wind up loving Pete more Penny's going to get jealous and then something's going to happen in their sex life where he really really sucks or something <laughs> it's got to be something like that to gotta leave to it too up. hot and heavy they, Marty Sala then something's going to happen where it's, she's going to well she to, like, already started making the list so maybe she'll go back to that list of everything that gets like on he, her nerves he doesn't like please her sexually like orally <laughs> and she's going to break up with him because of that or something I know it's going to well, be something wait spicy. this show is PG-13 <laughs> it's right? happy ending this it is, is happy ending <laughs> Too. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I love, love, love happy endings. Two more new episodes next week, so we will be back, and hopefully Thomas will be back with us, you know, to buzz about all the good stuff. Um, make sure you uh, go to iTunes and subscribe and download our podcast for free. Please rate and comment, and follow us on Twitter at AfterBuzzTV, and you can follow me at Kelly with an IE 079. And you can play with my Twitter day or night at Spicy <laughs> underscore Madi. And you can follow me on Twitter at the Fair and K. See you next week, guys. See you. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. You later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.